What's up everyone, this is Ken from the Kicker World Headquarters. Today we're going to install an amp and subwoofer in this 2016 Honda Civic, so stay tuned. We're going to go with the TB10 subwoofer. It has a 10 inch Comp R woofer in one side and a 10 inch passive radiator in the other side. We're going to power it with a Kicker KXA 400.1. It outputs 400 watts RMS into a 2 ohm load to that TB10. And to give it all the juice that it needs, we're gonna use Kicker wires. So we're gonna use the Kicker PK4 amp kit along with the Kicker KISL, the Kicker Kissel. That's a high level input adapter that allows us to take speaker level inputs directly from the car and put them directly into the RCA plugs on the amplifier. So before we get started, we need to figure out if we're gonna use the factory head unit or if there's already an aftermarket head unit in the car. So then if, are you gonna use high level into the amplifier? Are you gonna just run RCAs uh, out the RCA pre-outs to the amplifier? Um, so those are things you need to think about before you get to this stage. Uh, for this particular vehicle, the driver has requested that we reuse their factory head unit. Not a problem at all. We're going to actually test the high level outputs of the back of the head unit to see if they're usable and we'll take it from there. reusing a factory head unit, there are a couple of pitfalls that may come about depending on the particular vehicle you're working on. Uh, first and foremost is there might not be a 12 volt ignition turn on behind the head unit of your car. Um, so how are you going to turn on the amplifier on and off? For this particular install, we're going to use DC offset. DC offset is a small carrier signal that rides on the speaker leads. So the amplifier is able to read that carrier signal and turn on and off appropriately. Uh, the second thing you often have to worry about is dynamic EQs or crossed over uh, factory signals. So maybe the factory head unit outputs a crossed over signal where it's, it has no bass in it already. Obviously you wouldn't want to tap into that if you're using a subwoofer. Um, and maybe the EQ curve changes as you turn the volume up and down. So you need to test for that before you tap into those factory wires and decide you're going to use it. The third thing that you often have to look out for is dummy loads or smart head units. There are some smart head units out there for certain manufacturers. They look for a very specific resistance on those speaker leads. When they see resistance that they're not really happy with or it's out of their comfort zone, they mute the output. They go into protection. So what you need to do is trick that factory head unit into seeing the load that it wants. The KXA 401 that we're using has a, a 60 ohm dummy load built into it. It's the radio detect button on the end panel. That 60 ohm load will satisfy most smart radios. It'll keep them happy, keep them outputting audio for you to use for your purposes. There are some vehicles out there that require a lower resistance than that. We do have a product for that. It's called the Kicker Kiss Load. That's a 25 ohm load, so you can check that out. If the particular vehicle you're working on doesn't need any of that, just scope the leads with the RTA and it'll be all set. Let's get started. We've chosen to tap into our speaker leads behind the factory head unit. And we did that because the owner of the vehicle may choose to install an aftermarket head unit at a future date. So the RCAs that we're about to connect will already be back there. So future installer of a head unit in this car, you're welcome. But to test any factory speaker lead, you're gonna need a tool called an RTA or a real-time analyzer. What this does is it looks at the frequency curve that you have from 20 hertz all the way to 20 kilohertz. So you're gonna play pink noise through your factory source unit into the RTA device. For this particular RTA device, we're doing something that we, uh, we homemade here at Kicker. We do have the walkthrough of that on our website. You can check out the Kicker Tech Tips section on kicker.com and you can make yourself an RTA for about 50 bucks. Um, so let's go ahead and play Pink Noise and we'll see what kind of result we get. So here's the basic factory EQ curve from the, directly from behind the radio. I've made sure that all of the EQ settings on the head unit are flat. Um, all the you know, bass boost, etc., is turned off. So though it's not perfectly flat, it's not too bad. You can see that there is sub bass there to connect to. Um, but let's see if that EQ curve changes if I increase volume. Not too much, so we don't really have a dynamic EQ that we're dealing with. It's more or less full range and relatively flat. Um, so I would say that this is a usable signal to tap into for our subwoofer amplifier. So these are the front left speaker wires in the factory harness. Uh, we're gonna tap into the front left and front right speakers. That's the, the signal that we measured previously on our RTA. 
Um, so you can just tap into the factory harness like I have here. If you wanted to kind of go a step above, you could find the male and female versions of this plug and make yourself a little T-harness so you don't have to really touch the factory wires at all. But we're just doing a real basic, quick uh, DIY style install. So if you can see, I've actually stripped the insulation back on the wires. I haven't cut the wires in half. Stripped the insulation back and then I used a, a little pick tool to poke an eye hole in the copper strands themselves. Then we can take the kicker Kissel, the KISL, which has speaker wire on one side and RCA on the other. It's your front left wires, your front right wires here, and they are marked with the black stripe for negative and then the solid color for positive. So you take the corresponding speaker wire from the Kissel, thread it through the middle of that eye hole, push it down so it's parallel with the wire headed back, wrap the wire around, and then I'll probably go this step above and, and drop, a, drop a solder on there and wrap them up. So now we've tapped the kicker Kissel into those factory speaker wires. We tapped into the front left and front right speakers of this car. Uh, we then ran it along the OEM harness and we used some cloth tape to kind of wrap it up, make it look a little nicer. Now we have our RCA connections that we need to run to the amplifier. We can use the female to female adapters that come with the Kissel. We'll plug them into each RCA plug. Now we can plug regular RCA cables and run them back to our amp. So we're gonna install the power wire for this amplifier. We're gonna use the Kicker PK4 amp kit. Um, included with that is 100% copper OFC wire. Uh, so that's gonna re resist corrosion much, much better than some of the other competitor products. When you use Kicker power wire with a Kicker amplifier, you actually get plus one year warranty on that. So that's why we're using this wire here, not to mention it's obviously great quality as well. Also included with the amp kit is a mini ANL or AFS fuse holder, as well as a ground terminal lug. Uh, to attach this power wire to this particular battery, we're gonna use the Kicker BT4 battery terminal. So we're gonna replace the OEM terminal with the Kicker BT4. We're gonna wire the OEM wires into the Kicker BT4 as well as the four gauge power wire. Now we have the BT4 battery terminal installed. We have the OEM power wires connected to these two terminals on the BT4. We have one remaining empty terminal that we're gonna use for our four gauge power wire for the amplifier. So you're gonna plug the power wire into the BT4 and then here's the spot where you can put your fuse holder. The fuse holder should be within 18 inches of your positive battery post. We have it marked between these two pieces of kicker heat shrink. This little tag here says install fuse holder here. That's where the fuse holder goes. So go ahead and cut this wire in half put your fuse holder in line, and then the rest of the power wire can make its way through the firewall. And you can do that in a couple of different ways. You can find an OEM existing rubber grommet that you can hopefully fit this through, or you may have to drill your own hole and put your, put your uh, plastic four gauge plastic grommet in its place. For this particular install, the amplifier is gonna go under the passenger seat. So we're gonna look for an OEM grommet on the passenger side. So if you were able to find an OEM grommet to pass your power wire through, great. Exercise caution, make sure you don't nick any OEM wires or anything that are in that grommet, but it's a great and easy way to, to safely get your large gauge power wire into the firewall or through the firewall. Um, if you can't find an OEM grommet that's acceptable, you do have to drill your own hole through the firewall. Uh, the tool I'd recommend to do that is a unibit, it's a like this. The reason you'd use a step bit like this versus maybe a, a regular drill bit is actually once you breach that firewall, you don't then go racing all the way through it and stab something inadvertently on the other side. When hunting for the ideal location, to run your power wire through the firewall. Look for common things that are both on the passenger compartment side as well as the engine compartment side that you can use as points of reference. The idea being obviously is don't drill through the firewall unless you're positive you're not gonna hit anything on the other side. Great places to look for on vehicles that came with a manual transmission option but is not currently equipped with manual trans. There's usually a manual trans knockout plate that you can pull the carpet back and look for the firewall behind it. Now drill your hole snap in the plastic four gauge grommet and then run the power wire through. So the driver of this vehicle has decided he wants the amplifier underneath the passenger seat. We went ahead and pulled the passenger seat out just to give us a lot of room to work with and also so you guys can see what we're doing a little bit easier. Um, so we have our power wire run through the firewall. We have our signal cable run down here to this footwell. So we're gonna use DC offset to turn on the amplifier. Any kicker amplifier can take both a low level or RCA level signal as well as a high level or speaker level signal right into the RCA inputs. When you're using that high level signal, you can use DC offset to turn the amplifier on and off so you don't have to connect a, a traditional 12 volt remote turn on lead. Anytime you're using that DC offset, you need to make sure you flip that switch 
to the DC offset position so the amplifier knows to look for that carrier signal. The amplifier will be placed roughly there. We've already checked to make sure that the seat won't hang up on it when it slides forward and back. We have our RCA as our signal cable that we connected behind the factory head unit ready to go. We have our power wire that we pass through the passenger side of the firewall. The fuse is removed from the fuse holder, so this is not you know, live 12 volt running through it. So from here, we need to go ahead and pull these body panels up and we'll get these wires run underneath the carpet in a safe manner. So to run wires in a safe manner, if, even if it's a short run like this or a long run all the way from the front to the back of the car, you need to make sure that you, you follow proper wire running techniques. So make sure that the wire is not going to be pinched anywhere once everything's back together. Make sure that it's not going to rub up against anything or, or get pinched from the seat moving forward back or any other moving parts that it might come past. Let's get started. So now we've prepped the surface that we're going to ground to. When you're grounding the amplifier, you want to ground directly to the chassis of the vehicle. Not to some point that's welded to another piece of metal, it's welded to another piece of metal, directly to the chassis of the vehicle. Um, and then you want to prep the surface. So make sure you sand away all the paint primer. You want to get all the way down to shiny bare metal. Make sure there's no debris in the way of the connection or anything like that. So then once you have your grounding ring terminal, put it on your shiny bare metal. There's a couple different ways you can, you can go through that. The PK4 amp kit we're using comes with a grounding lug. However, another option if you don't have that is a nut and a bolt. Put the bolt in from the top and the nut in from the bottom. If you can get in there and make it super tight, that's an excellent uh, solution as well. Most folks tend to use a self-tapping screw and a star washer. I've seen that quite a bit. Uh, whatever method you choose, the important thing is there, if you can grab a hold of the ground and actually wiggle it after you're done, it's too loose. You need to find another method to make sure that it's tight. A solid ground guarantees maximum performance from your system. So we've ran the speaker wire back to the trunk. The next thing we do is mount the TB10 bracket to the bottom of the car. Then the feet of the TB10 will enter into the bracket here, lock it in place. Let's go ahead and mount her down. So now we have the amp fully installed. We have the fuse installed under the hood. The amp's powered on. Now we need to set gain. Gain's extremely important to set properly. For the KXA401 that we've installed, we actually have a gain match feature built in. So you can adjust the gain knob and it'll light up to tell you when you're, you've set the gain properly. In order to do that, you're going to need to play a sine wave through your source unit, whether that's factory or aftermarket. You can download those test tones from kicker.com. For a subwoofer amplifier, you're going to want to use 50 hertz. And for a four channel amplifier or a full range amplifier, you're going to want to use one kilohertz. Before you actually set gain, you want to make sure all the EQ settings on your factory or aftermarket head unit are set to flat. Bass boost, loudness, etc., is all set to flat. Um, so we're going to go ahead, we're going to play the sine wave here, and then we're going to slowly increase gain until we see this knob here light up. Back it off just a little bit until that light goes out. That's how you know you've perfectly set gain and you've maximized the output of the amplifier. Now that we have the gain knob set properly, let's talk about all the rest of these knobs. So the next knob over on the KXA 400.1 is going to be the subsonic filter. A subsonic filter will block very, very deep bass from entering the subwoofer. If you've got a vented enclosure, that's going to be something you want to use. The next one over is going to be the low pass crossover. So that's going to filter out all your mid-range and high frequencies from, from the subwoofer. Uh, on this particular one, it goes between 40 hertz and 160 hertz. Uh, roughly 80 hertz is a good place to start, but the idea being there is you can test it, um, listen to it for a little while, and if you know, set it to where you like it. Next up is going to be the kicker EQ section. This is your bass boost. So we have adjustable center frequency of the boost, the band width of the boost, so how much, how many frequencies it's actually affecting, and then the amount of boost. If you're going to set bass boost at all, I recommend you dial the gain back a little to compensate. So the pair of the bass knob, there's a pair button back here. There's also a pair button on the amplifier. You can hit either one first. So once we hit it, you'll start to see one LED blink down there. So it's now looking for the amplifier. Do the same down here, kind of press and hold for about two seconds, and it's locked in. Once you've seen this light go solid, it's now paired to that amplifier. It's actually looking for a second amplifier. So the KX line of bass amplifiers, the knob can be paired up to four monoblock amplifiers with one bass knob. Once you're done, you can press the knob in, it'll exit the pairing mode. That's it, you now have subwoofer control. So that's it, we got everything dialed in. She sounds great, there's a ton of bass in this car now. So this was just a, a quick and easy install. If you wanna go above and beyond and make a custom amp rack or do things a little bit differently, there's a million different ways you could have done it. But this is yet a, a very quick and simple way, but still very, very safe and effective. So uh, you can take that a step above if you'd like. 
For more information, you can check out kicker.com as well as our app. We do have a Kicker U app that is really, really cool. It has a power wire calculator, a box builder, a port converter, a lot of different cool things on there. It's available on both the iOS and Android Play Store, and you can link to it from kicker.com. So thanks for joining us today.